In a previous video, we found probability of a normal distribution. Now, when we're looking at those types of problems, we were looking at using our normal CDF to find the probability that the values are lower than a z-score, between two z-scores, or higher than a z-scores. And then also we did that with raw scores. But what if they give us the probability or the proportion of the population with that um, setup, or they give us the amount of area? How if they give us those in pieces of information would we find the z-scores or even the raw scores for which that would occur? Well, we're going backwards on the process that we did before. And when you're going backwards on a process in mathematics, we call that the inverse. So when we have the probability or when we have the area and we want to find the z-score or the raw score for a normal probability distribution, we're going to use the inverse norm. So here, it says find the value of z so that 3.8% of the standard normal curve lies to the left of z. So I have the percent, but I want to find the z. That's when we need to use the inverse norm. It's handy to kind of look at the distribution and visualize the scenario. So 3.8% of the standard normal curve lies to the left of z. So thinking about the number on the number line, that's your z's or your raw scores, and you want the shading to go to the left, and it's only 3.8%, so 0 0.038. 0 0.038 is little. So if I have a vertical line and I shade left and I only want a little bit of the area, it has to be further over to the left already for that to be a tiny amount shaded. Now that's the shaded amount. 0 0.038. We need to change our percent to our decimal form. I want to find the z-score for which that's true. So we're going to go to the inverse norm. And the way they decided to set up your calculators if you're using a TI-83 or a TI-84 in order to take the input and then give the values back is area to the left of whatever the cutoff is. Area shaded to the left. Well, area to the left is exactly what this question actually gave. So when I do the inverse norm, it's area to the left, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. So we'll have the point 0, 0.038. The mean of the z-scores is 0. And the standard deviation of the z-scores is 1. And when you go through and calculate that, you should get a negative 1.774. And that makes sense, because remember, with 0 in is the mean of the z-scores, that z-scores for data values that are left of the mean will be negative, z-scores for data values to the right of the mean will be positive. And so that I got the negative 1.774 for my z-score makes sense. What if they want me to find the value of z so that 15% of the standard normal curve lies to the right of z? So when I draw my standard normal curve, 15% is still not a huge amount. Remember, right in the middle, it's 50% to the right, 50% to the left. So 15% to the right, I'm going to have to be further over to the right. And so I have the area, and I want to find the z-score. So I'm going to do the inverse norm again. But the input they want is area left of the cutoff, the vertical line. So if I've got 15% to the right, the entire amount is 100% or 1, I have to take 1 and subtract that 0.15 to get 0.85 for how much would be left of this vertical line if 15% were right of it. So my inverse norm is 0.85, the mean of the z's is 0, the standard deviation of the z's is 1, and I get 1.036 for that z-score. 
How about finding the z so that 87% of the standard normal curve lies between negative z and positive z, so opposites of each other. So this means it's going to be centered. My normal curve. And I'm centering it. So I have 0.87 in the center, and z and the opposite of z. Well, remember, I need area left of the vertical line. So either this little tail of it, or here all the way to the left. Well, I know that there's a total of one for the area. If I subtract the 0.87, that's 0.13. But that's got to be shared between these two portions. So I'm going to take 0.13 and divide that by 2, and I get 0 0.065. Okay, now there's a 0 0.065 here and a 0 0.065 here. If I do the inverse norm with 0 0.065, I will get this z-score. And then, because it wants it centered, I could just do the positive of that number for the other one. So, inverse norm of 0 0.065, comma, 0, comma, 1. And we get a negative 1.514. And then the other value is the positive 1.514. Now, how about the work with assuming that women have heights that are normally distributed with the population mean being 63.6 inches and the population standard deviation being 2.5 inches? Find two different things, the value of the 95th percentile and the value of the upper quartile. So again, I have the percent, and then I want the raw score this time that has that happen. Well, what does a 95th percentile mean? The 95th percentile means the data value at which 95% of the rest of the population is at or below that number. So this is my 0.95 area. So again, I have the percent or the area, and I want to get, this time, the raw score back. So again, it's inverse norm. Area to the left of the cutoff is 0.95. The mean, though, is 63.6. And the standard deviation is 2.5. And when you go through and calculate that, you will get 67.71 inches. So a woman that is 67.71 inches tall is at the 95th percentile. Her height is at, so for all of the other heights of women in the population, they are at or below that 67.71 inches. How about finding the value of the upper quartile, Q3? Well, remember, the upper quartile, Q3, is just the 75th percentile. So, we want the value so that 75% of the distribution is at or below that value. So, we will do inverse norm. of 0 0.75 comma 63.6 comma 2.5 and we will get 65.29 inches. So that is how you go through and find either the standardized score, the z-score, or the raw score if you're given the percent and you want to find
the raw score or z-score, or if you're given the probability and you're asked to find it. This information will come up um, again when we're looking at critical values in our inferential statistics segments. 